So here we are at uh, the AZH Wound Care Center in Milwaukee. This young lady presents with a very atypical looking uh, wound, as you will note. This has been present for 30 years in a non-healing state, or at least what I would say a partially healing state. If you look really closely at the wound, there is evidence of epithelialization uh, over this verrugous sort of fungating uh, central core, um, but that's not, uh, it does not appear to be viable dermis or dermis that is very resistant. She scratches, rubs it, and it opens again and starts all over again. Bottom line is that these are atypical looking wounds. Atypical location, atypical appearance, and whenever you think atypical, you need to confirm with histopathology exactly what the diagnosis is. There are a number of things that this could represent. Cancer obviously is a concern, although cancer is lower on my list here based on the fact that there are multiple wounds. They're sort of satellite type lesions that you see. She has another wound over here on this aspect of the leg, and then she actually has one on the other side of her right leg. So. All of these are uh, speak against it being a cancer of the multiple sites, but yet certainly that is uh, uh, part of the differential. Uh, this looks very suspicious for an atypical fungal type of wound with you see the satellite growth and extensions and the fungating lesion. So it could be a number of things, but until we uh, look at the tissue under a microscope, we're not going to know. The choices with doing a biopsy would be number one, to do a punch biopsy, or number two, to do an excisional biopsy. And we have opted for an excisional biopsy here uh, based on the fact that um, I, I think that this may in fact be a lesion that will heal by uh, delayed primary intention after it's excised. And so based on that, we're going to do this wound here. Uh, we are sending that off for tissue. And if something comes back unusual, we'll obviously proceed down that management pathway. But if it is uh, just hyperplastic tissue infiltrated with uh, uh, white cells um, and really no specific diagnosis, what we will then do is we will uh, provide matrix to the wound base come back and excise the other ones and proceed the same way and try to get them to heal by uh, delayed intention. So that's what the plan is here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and anesthetize. I'm only going to take this lesion here. So we're using some 1% uh, lidocaine with epinephrine. We'll follow our normal rules of after an injection, allowing three to five minutes of time to pass so that the lidocaine can actually take effect. All right, we've waited a few minutes here. Now, in doing an excisional biopsy, um, we aren't going to go real deep. We don't need to go deep. We're just going to basically scribe around the lesion, peel the lesion back, and just take the biopsy uh, underneath. But I do want to get uh, all of the tissue, so we're going to make a little line approximately here. It's important to get a full thickness excision here. We don't want to miss any of the tissue. And I'm also trying to be fairly traumatic, as you can see with the biopsy. I don't want to crush the tissue and injure it, although we do have a lot of tissue to work with. We want to be fairly cautious not to crush the tissues of the specimen when it does go for pathology is not destroyed. And we're just skiving right underneath the wound, as you see. Inferior border here. All right. Take a look at the wound base here. We've done a pretty nice job of excising. You see a very healthy wound base there. We're looking at the tissue specimen here. We've got full thickness. Done a nice job of taking that out. 
And what we're going to do here is we're going to divide this in half. The reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to send one for culture and one for histopathology. So we bisected the lesion, so one for each. I'm going to use a little bit of wound clot on this base to stop the bleeding. A cellulose based product works very nicely for controlling bleeding. When you're applying wound clot, you apply it over the wound base and just apply gentle pressure. You don't need a lot of pressure. It's the product itself that actually does the hemostasis. So you have very nice control there. Okay, so we'll send these specimens off and then we will update you as to what the results of the pathology come back, maybe on another edition of the Wound Care Window.